Really, we have to understand our history. But we also have to understand the threats to our civilization that is coming place. And we have to have a united response to it. In private conversation, everybody talks to me about uh, Muslims and the danger they pose and so on. Well, I suppose they are looking at this terrorism all over the world and uh, they are not, you know, they are not, in, they are not ready like other people to make a distinction. And they generally say in a generic term, the Muslim, Muslims are terrorists, etc. But the fact is, you see, the problem with Muslims is not their terrorism. It's their, their uh, religion is so clear-cut. And in a sense, we should uh, admire it because uh, they know their mind. We, are, we Hindus are the uh, people who don't know their mind. You know, it's like Arjuna sitting in the middle of Mahabharata, uh, you know, in Kurukshetra, saying, shall I kill my brother, shall I not kill my brother? Or when Karna was down uh, repairing his ch chariot, uh, and you know, he said, shall I kill him now? Is it proper for a Kshatriya to kill him? Krishna had to tell him each time that he has to do it. So this uh, nagging doubts, the Indians have all kinds of nagging doubts. But the Muslim is very clear-minded. And, uh, and Muhammad told them the world is in three parts. And the Muslim behavior must be different for the, each of those parts. First part, he said, is Darul Islam. Darul Islam is where the Muslims are in power. They are in majority, they are in power. And uh, he says there, there should be no allowance, accommodation for any other religion. So either they must convert or be killed. It's as specific as that in the Siran and Hadith. So in, in most of these countries where the Muslims are in power, you can see a total intolerance to the minorities. In Saudi Arabia, we have so many Hindu workers there. Can they celebrate Diwali in Saudi Arabia? No. Can they build a Hindu temple like you are able to build here in the United States? No. Can you even carry the four picture of Ramchandra Ji in your pocket when you go to work? No. And there are penal offenses if you do it. You can't even have Satyanarayan Puja inside your own house. Now, this is the position of Muslims when they are in majority. When they are in minority, as in India, they are demanding mosques, they are demanding uh, their right to read namaz, the Friday holiday, uh, etc. It's a separate, a separate code for marriage and so on. So what the Muslims demand as a minority, they will not accept to give when they are in the majority. So that's a, uh, you may not like this point of view, but there's clarity in that mind. And so Muhammad says that when you are in majority, you are not to tolerate any other religion. You must wipe it out. Second is that where the Muslims are not in majority. There he has, Muhammad divided the world into uh, a, two parts. And that is, first part is, which he called as Darul Harab. Darul Harab is where the Muslims are in a sizable minority and the majority is divided. The ma majority is confused, like we are today, like we Hindus are today. There, Muhammad says that the job of the Muslims is to go on demanding more and more concessions by acting collectively. And ultimately reach a point where they are able to transform that uh, uh, so, uh, uh, the society into a Darul Islam, from Darul Harab to Darul Islam. So when you look at the laboratory experimentation of this, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you selecting, uh, you know, looking for evidence, you see this very clearly. Take Kashmir. Kashmir is, uh, the, the valley at least is a majority Muslim area. See what has happened to the minorities there. 500,000 Kashmiri Pandits have been driven out. All the temples have been destroyed to the extent that they can, where it's not protected by central, uh, central police. And uh, Hindus have hardly any rights. They are discriminated against, they are threatened. 
In Pakistan, it's very difficult to remain a Muslim. There are a few Muslims there, maybe 50, a few Hindus, um, or like uh, you know, about 50,000 or so. Some say 500,000, but I don't know. But those who come from there tell horrible stories of what happens to them. In Bangladesh, uh, in 1947, there were 32% of the population were Hindus. Today it's only 7%. Nobody talks about it. You see, they'll talk about Gujarat every day, but they will not talk about what's happening in Bangladesh. And it's not only states and countries. Even districts you will see this. If you go to, say, Mau in Uttar Pradesh, you can see it. Even why we go to Kerala in Malapuram, Malapuram, the Hindus are living there in utter fear. And they invited me recently to address a meeting. And I did go. And there I found that uh, the, even though there's no such provision for such a law, and it's illegal to advocate it, Muslims have laid down a rule there that if any Hindu wants to sell a property, in Malapuram, he has to sell it to another Muslim. So this is, uh, 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 you can see, in a district. Even smaller you go down to Tamil Nadu. Total population of Muslims in Tamil Nadu is 5%. In one area near Vellore, it's called Mel Visharam, there is a town panchayat. In the town panchayat, there 75% Muslim. And the local body's election, they come to power in the administration of that town panchayat. And they will not give any amenities of the town panchayat uh, to these Hindu areas until they want, they agree to convert. So they make it a condition. You convert, we'll give it to you. Otherwise, not give you. I went there and I saw myself what was happening. So I went to the court and got a court order. And now, of course, the matter is rectified. But I can't do this. On a, on a, you know, on a micro basis, I did it as an example, but this is what's happening. This is the mindset of the Muslim. And finally, Muhammad says, if you are in a minority and the majority is united, then Muhammad says, surrender and don't argue with the minority. And that's what we see in countries where the majority is united, Australia. Australia, one day, uh, Imam said that, you know, I can't, uh, I know it's intolerable to have uh, a uniform civil code with the Christians in, uh, in Australia. We need our own Sharia. And I appeal to the Prime Minister to give us Sharia. So Prime Minister was a lady, the next day said, if you want Sharia, my recommendation to you is to go and find another country, because in Australia, we are not going to give you. Uh, a separate code. You will have only an, a, a, a uniform civil code. Now, immediately the following day, all the Muslim organization passed a resolution saying that this uh, Imam is an idiot uh, or you know, is an imbecile. He doesn't represent us. We are very happy with uniform civil code. So in Australia, the Muslims will accept uniform civil code, but not in India. And this, in the United States also, you can't have a separate, although there are heavy efforts going on. So, where the majority is united, the Muslim population is advised by, by Sira and Hadith to cooperate, collaborate, capitulate to the majority. And I think that's, there's a lesson for us in that unity. What is the problem today in India? They are all the time of accusation that politicians are, you know, appeasing the minority, they are appeasing them to get votes, vote bank politics, so on. Well, I have talked to those politicians, like Maulayam Singh, and I told him, what is this that you are doing? So he said, well, I, I can't get elected unless the Muslims vote for me. Because the Hindus will only vote, only Yadavas, Yadavas will vote for me. Others will not vote for me. So therefore, I have to appease them. And the day the Hindus vote as one block, that day I will put on a tikka and say, Jai Sri Ram and come out of my house. Because I am interested in getting vote and this is the way to get it. And I am telling you today that all this appeasement talk that you are, 
you people are condemning, I see people condemning politicians for that. I am explaining, I am telling you that the day the Hindus will, uh, the day the Hindus will unite, all these politicians will change around. And they will start talking in terms of uh, Hindu and Hindus and what should be done for them. We are 80, 80 percent or 80 plus, even today. And if of this half the population decides to vote for a party which stands for Hindus, that party will get more than majority of the seats. Majority is 272, but according to my calculation, you'll get 320 seats in the 544 member house of parliament. So how is the Muslim responsible for our plight? It is we, for lack of unity, for lack of ability to vote, at least once, once, twice, you know, as Hindus, and say that we, for the sake of protection of our, for our, of our civilization, we are going to vote for a party which, uh, which, is, uh, which will work for our interests. Certainly that party cannot be Congress, because the Congress today has been taken over by Sonia Gandhi, who is uh, answerable only to the Vatican, and she promotes uh, Christian uh, missionary activity. We are not against Christians. Christians can propagate as much they like in India. But we, we don't want foreign missionaries to come here to India and uh, poke their noses into our, our internal affairs. So they, but she abets them. She brings them. So, uh, obviously voting for them is useless. The only grouping which can possibly, uh, work for Hindu interests would be uh, the NDA. And there, of course, I'm hard at work. Uh, certainly, I can tell you if both Modi and myself get together inside the, I'm already there, but in terms of decision making, there should be no doubt in anybody's mind that Hindu interests will not suffer.